from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and we are in Orlando at SAP Sapphire Now 2018. We're in the NetApp booth and we are now talking with Gerald Pfeiffer, the SUSE VP of Products and Technology Programs. Gerald, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So thank you for bringing the, the SUSE chameleon here. So let's talk about open source. What is an open source company? What are the key hallmarks that define an open source company? So when you think of open source, Technically, it's about the license. It's about the open source license that the software is under. Um, but if you want to be a real open source company, there's actually, it goes beyond that. And that's where many, we see many of the classic companies fail, as in, you take a piece of software that you have written in-house, you open source it, which means you put an open source license on it, and then you throw it over the fence. You put it on an FTP server or on a web, web server or GitHub or somewhere and say, this is an open source project. Technically true, but what open source really is about also is how you develop the software, is the development model. It's, it's about the community or communities you have. And so as a open open source company or as a true open source company, what it, what it means is, you need to change how you develop the software and how you go about it. And then involves, you need to, you need to let go. To some, you, need to, you need to lose, lose in a way you lose control and you need, to, you need to help. If it's something that you initiated, you need to make this attractive for others and easy to contribute and so, so the development model, the transparency, uh, collaboration, communications, um, all that is really important for a successful open source project, but I would argue also for a successful open source company. So let's yeah. talk about the community for a little bit when it comes to open source, and specifically to, with SUSE. SUSE is one of the most successful open source companies in the world. However, your key product, SUSE Enterprise Linux, you guys don't control the kernel. You, you have to work with a, a community of organizations and personalities and conflicting agendas. How has SUSE organ, organized itself that over a 25 year period you guys have consistently grown become more prominent in, in, in the industry. How do you head that when you don't even own, we don't rather control the, the, the key technology, the kernel to your product? Yeah, so that's actually the trick, the trick behind it. And, and, and the, the short answer is you cannot control, but you can influence. And so how do you influence? And it's really about becoming part of the community or I usually actually when we get new employees that come from a proprietary background one of the first things I teach them is there is no such thing as the open source community it's actually open source communities there is actually many of them and even your example the kernel there is the, the Linux kernel community but inside the, everyone the group of everyone who contributes they're actually subgroups, people focusing on different aspects. And so if you want to, to influence that, um, the easiest way, <laughs> not, and the hard way, mm -hmm. is you start contributing. And so you start building up um, rapport, you start building up credibility, and that's usually not something you do overnight. It's not like you can come and say, oh, I, I've been doing operating systems for 30 years, I'm a distinguished engineer, and now I'm telling you this is how you need to do it. You start by contributing code, you start by being part of the conversations, by uh, critiquing constructively, hopefully, other people's contributions, usually in a certain area, and then people start getting to know your name, and they start trusting you. And I've. Um, I'm not a kernel. I'm not a kernel engineer, but there are a couple of open source projects I've contributed since writing my my PhD thesis, 
And I'm still doing that, usually on my weekends or evenings when I have a little time. And so there are people I've been working together for 15 years or more who I've never met in person. And some I've met, and then I realized, wait a minute, I know he's going to be at the conference, and I don't know how old he is. <laughs> he wrote about his children, so that gives a certain, or his, right. his young baby children, so that may give a, an idea. But I don't know how old he is, I don't know what color of hair, what color of skin. I, but then you meet, and because you have this relationship, you actually, you know, you get together, and there, there, is, there is trust. And once you have this trust on a personal level, but also, at least as importantly, or I would rate both the same on, on a technical side, I trust your, your judgment, then you start influencing. Is that what makes uh, SUSE an open, open source company? Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely one of the aspects where when we want to, we want to drive something, and I'll give you an example that's actually, especially in the SAP context, this is really relevant. It's something we, we call live kernel patching. So, you know, you have these HANA systems with lots of memories, and, and you have all those security issues that keep popping up now and then. Um, and so one of the challenges is you want to apply the security update if you are an IT person, but when you do so, you need to, and it's a kernel thing, then you need to restart the server. Mm -hmm. Because other subsystems, like the web server, you just restart the web server and you're down for one millisecond and nobody really notices unless you're cnn.com or whatever. Um, but if you, re if you restart the kernel, the whole machine reboots. And then, it, you know, you scan the memory and you have a HANA machine with 12 terabyte of memory or 16. So the startup takes, and then why is HANA so fast? Because all the data is in memory. Now, doing that isn't, isn't fast. So that's really interesting as you look through, I love the integration between SAP and SUSE. The in-memory, uh, the continuous kernel, patching, the yeah. ability to integrate the two solutions. It's interesting, the, you guys have a partnership, and you have outside of SAP with these companies that not necessarily, from a licensing perspective, the, the application is closed source. Yeah. So there is a myth, I think, in the industry that closed source software versus open source software, one is more secure, one is more stable, random religious arguments. What are we seeing in the wow? What are how are customers embracing the SUSE relationship along with the SAP relationship? You know, in a way, <laughs> and it's a it's a that's a tricky that's a tricky statement to make. But in a way, in first approximations, customers don't care whether it's open source or proprietary. As a customer, I care that it works. Right. And if I, I'm an SAP customer, my SAP workload needs to, needs to stay up. And so what I'm looking for is performance, is security, is um, scalability, is availability, high availability. And so whatever platform gives that to me is the platform that I choose, or in the case of, of HANA, for actually, SAP choose. So if you look at HANA, it's an interesting example. The only operating system it's available on, the only platform it's available on, is Linux. So SAP actually has done that research and they looked into it and said, okay, we need certain characteristics. What's the, where do we get the best solution? It turns out Linux, Linux offered that. And so I don't see when it comes to applications in particular or workloads, I don't see it as much as being open source or proprietary. It's really what's the best technical solution. And then there obviously is the question behind the question is, how do you actually get to the best solution? And that's where the open source model where 
it's not just one company doing that. We have lots of engineers contributing to the kernel in other parts, um, but it's only it's only one part. Many of our partners contribute, our competitors contribute, and so in this open source arena. Um, Things move just to improve, for example, the Linux kernel, and you, you get a better outcome than any proprietary vendor would actually be been able to deliver with a classic Unix system, for example. You talked about you know, customers not caring about the technology, it just needs to work. And it's kind of the same thing I think of when you look at, a, at, at technology like ERP software, um, that's largely invisible, right? So is SUSE. And SAP wants to be one of the top 10 most valuable global brands. And this morning during the keynote, Bill McDermott said they are now number 17. So they're getting up there to the big brands like Apple, Coca-Cola, Google, who all have products that we can kind of see and touch. So when you are partnership with SAP, how do you uh, articulate the value of what you guys can deliver to help the customer not, A, not care about what's under the hood here, but also ensure that they're actually able to deliver what they need to to their customers? What are some of those unique, maybe, customer examples that you have where customers with uh, SAP and SUSE are transforming their businesses or their industries? Um, yeah, so much, much of this of this transformation really comes from the SAP stack. What what we contribute is is really the stability of the platform. And so, um, obviously, obviously, it, in, in at the technical level, people do care. Uh, do care actually about open source because the one thing open source provides you is the transparency. You can see an SAP engineer is actually developing HANA, for example, but also other other things we do together. They, they, they have been looking at the source code, trying to understand what's going on and then optimize HANA. So when I, when I said customers don't care, that's in the first approximation because it needs to work. If it doesn't work, everything else doesn't, right, doesn't exactly. matter. Um, but if, and so there are the people who, who care about the technical more details. Often these days, or usually when, when it's, it's really with like a, at the CIO level or an IT director level, um, what they care more about is things like high availability scenarios or blueprints. So it's not just one bit of, one bit of technology or even how HANA runs on SUSE, but they know a server is going to fail at one point. So, and how do... When I ran an SAP environment, one of the things that we did, we did a bake-off of Linux distributions for our appliances. And these are appliances. In yeah. theory, you, you get an appliance, you can turn it on, you install your SAP app, and life goes on, and no one should care about the underlying appliance. But for us, it was about the OS and availability. You know, we were coming from a non-stop XP, uh, HP um, uh, titanium shop, and we were very happy with the non-stop capability. But going to x86, there's a lot of thought that goes into making that non-stop. Can you talk to the relationship between NetApp, SAP, and and SUSE from a community perspective, because this is related to the conversation around open source, and making that happen, and, and to your point, how do you care, why would an IT director care about SUSE versus some other distribution? So, you know, if I look at the conversations I'm having, often it's, it's then looking at it at the solution level. So if you can point out that you have the blueprints or reference architectures or whatever you want to call it, you have customer success stories, et cetera, where you can say, look, this is in a scenario like this, in, in, your, um, in your market or in your, in your vertical, this is what you can do and this is how it will be supported so that your guys don't have to start from zero, but it's actually really easy um, to go to high availability or in fact, we have a dedicated team that sits in the, it sits in the Linux lab with all the other partners you named and many more where SAP, and that's actually a really clever thing they did, uh, creating this Linux, Linux lab and they also have a partner port 
we're talking about communities, they have created this level of community where different vendors come together, um, you know, and you have holder conversations and you want to do something, said, okay, hey, how do you do this with the suicide side? How do you do this on the NetApp side? Um, and then at an engineering level and at a solution level, you, you build something that actually works technically and then obviously the support relationship um, is really important. So that's, that's one of the challenges open source had in the beginning compared to proprietary um, because if you, if you look at some of the old full stack companies or established ones, they used to deliver hardware and then the operating system and then middleware or database and the application top. So you had one phone number to call when there's a problem. And originally with open source, you know, you've got this piece here and then you've got the storage from, from NetApp, say, and, the, and who do you call? And then the finger pointing starts. So what has made open source also successful is, is the establishment of, of really processes, agreements, and just practical workflows so that our companies work together and when it's a customer, they can pick up the phone in fact, if you, if you look at Slash for SAP applications, what we have set up in this in SAP environment is you can call SAP and that's the only phone number you ever need to call. And everything behind that happens fully transparently. So all the vendors, vendors get together. So to sum up, it sounds like what, what you're talking about that's really key for SUSE is openness, transparency, trust, collaboration. Yes, and that at the open source level, at the, at, at the Linux kernel, compiler, and, and, and the individual project, but essentially the same. Exactly what you explained, also at the business level, what we do with partners and what we do with customers. And we heard that um, in the keynote this morning, Bill McDermott really kind of was talking about trust as the new currency. So Gerald, you're right in line with that. Thank you so much for joining Keith and me today. Thank you for having me. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend from SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Thanks for watching.